Welcome back to Bucharest. This is the traditional place for house on fifth time. We are meeting here at Dreamhack with me, Ecop and Nimsh. Hey guys, how are you doing? Hey. I'm doing great. Uh, I've been hosting the last one. This time I finally have a chance to cast a bit more. And with your friend. Yeah, with my old, uh, former old teammate. teammate uh, we've actually been in so many teams like Team Doggy House and, uh, and Cloud9. And, and we're all teamless, teamless now. So team teamless. Uh, I I I, get I actually came back to Dogger House now. Oh, you're now in Dogger House, yeah. so maybe I should <laughs> rejoin at some point. Maybe possibly. you should. That's like the other traditional stuff we have within House and Scene, right? 2013, Dogger House and Fight Night, all this stuff. That, uh, that was quite awesome. But right now we have the second match for Group D. This is the last group that we had for today, but three matches are left. As you can see, this is the bracket. Life Coach and AK Wonder both won. 3-1 to one against Gara and Hoi, so they will be playing against each other now on stream. Life coaches to AK Wonder. Uh, to be honest, I can't wait because both of those players, I mean, first of all, AK Wonder always plays super greedy decks, so they are kind of different from other stuff that people are bringing. And Life Coach always presents a different type of mindset when it comes to um, uh, the gameplay that you usually see. So now we have the ban phase. Nimsh, what can you tell us what happened? Well, the first thing I, uh, I'm looking at is the Shaman ban from AK Wonder. And uh, before, we've always seen a ban on Warrior or Druid. I, I don't think we've seen Shaman, but like banning Shaman is obviously a strong ban mm -hmm. um, on one side. And um, then Life Coach is picking his Warrior again. The Warrior was really good in the last match. It won him a couple of games, a very strong uh, Dragon Warrior. He is banning Warrior himself, so he, is, he sees the power. He says, I'm not going to give you the Warrior. I'm going to take Warrior myself. Interesting is the fact that AK Wonder plays the Yog, um, Yog Saron Warrior, right? So yeah. it's a different type of Warrior and he's still banded. So he, I, at least that's my educational guess, that he, his lineup is not really that great against greedy decks and would rather avoid that, right? So uh, it's kind of weird that he left, uh, that AK Wonder left the Warrior open for Life Coach because it's, it's doing massive work for Life Coach. And... Uh, well, I always worry. I'm always worried when I see a warrior against me, right? Ikop, what do you think? Well, yeah, warrior is arguably the strongest class in Hearthstone right now, uh, especially because there's so much variety within that class. And um, yeah, but uh, I guess Aka Wonder knows what Life Coach's warrior is uh, because it was, after all, streamed. Like and five times. Yeah, <laughs> and it's uh, sometimes it's just better to have the um, the enemy that is known, even though it's powerful, mm -hmm. instead of just something unknown. Okay. That you have to face. The other uh, other bands that we have second pick, uh, sorry, second ban was both for both players the druid and then a warlock and a paladin. So interesting to see a ba paladin ban in the second phase. Uh, then uh, life coach picked his rogue, while there was a warlock pick for AK Wonder. In the last stage, we see mage and priest banned by life coach, and mage and paladin ban by AK Wonder. So the last pick is actually a priest. The, the fun fact is that the life coach had hunter open, but he didn't take the hunter. Mm -hmm. An interesting part also is the second pick for life coach t taking rogue. Uh, apparently, he felt like because there's shaman, rogue can be a good pick overall mm -hmm. in that mm -hmm. in that specific moment. Plus, uh, leaving hunter for AK Wonder when uh, he is running warrior, I believe hunter is actually has a, a good matchup versus warrior. Uh, whatever the warrior is, like even dragon warrior, hunter should be fine versus that deck. So leaving hunter open, he said like I'm not afraid of your hunter. I'm not afraid of your warlock, at least. Yeah, uh, Hello, um, it's actually super important. The second, the second pick is actually where uh, sometimes the whole match can be decided already, mm -hmm. because it's uh, just so important to uh, set up the second pick, into and because we basically have to pick it, um, and kind of expecting at the same time from the previous bands and picks what your opponent is uh, going to pick second, and also in, t in it you have to pick it in, anticipa in anticipation of what uh, you expect your opponent to uh, kind of try to counter your stuff with in the later picks. Okay. So it's makes sense. It's it's definitely the trickiest decision, the second pick and um, sometimes yeah, the whole mid series can be decided based on that alone instead of just the first pick. Because Excellent. the first pick is so most of the time super obvious and um, yeah. Because it's one of the strongest decks, uh, usually the first pick, it's uh, the lineups will be like the decks in general will be prepared prepared for those kind of strong decks. The conclusion is it's a really complicated format. 
Anyway, guys, uh, take it away. It's Hunter versus Warrior. Thank you so much, Lothar. So this is what I've mentioned to Ecub in the beginning. The open Hunter, um, then AK Wonder knows that the Warrior is, is there. He suppose he, he, he can uh, easily assume that Life Coach is going to open with Warrior because he because he did that last time. And he's picking that Hunter as the counter to the deck. Do you agree that Hunter has a an okay matchup? I would not say it's like heavily favored. It just has an okay matchup versus Warrior. Yeah, generally um, is widely agreed upon that Hunter does have a favorable matchup against uh, Warrior, even um, if it's the control Warrior we're talking about. The Dragon Warrior, it, um, because of the aggressiveness of the deck, um, the, warrior, the Dragon Warrior can potentially get ahead um, in front of the Hunter in terms of uh, board presence. And then Hunter is going to have a harder time. Um, but still, like Hunter ha can d deal with the Dragon Warrior for sure. However, Life Coach does have an even more anti-aggro approach. We saw it before with a double Nuzos first mate, and uh, that will definitely something be something that comes into effect here, wh which we see right now in Life Coach's hand. Look at that. Yeah, the p p picking that Nuzos first mate is pretty good, specifically because he doesn't have the fireworks and he countered the bat. If he doesn't lose the the one one, is also quite nice, because then it does counter the freezing trap that's in the hand at the very moment. So you don't want to get your freezing trap triggered by one one. Yeah, this is. Uh, I I want to uh, mention again, like this is the how beautiful the beautiful thing about life coaches decks. Uh, we saw it in the previous matchup with the, we had the rogue as well in that ma match matchup, right? With the double Arshan squire, and here with the double Nzos first mate, having those one drops at your disposal, just to basically counteract hunter uh, with freezing traps, for example, right? They are so good against freezing traps. Of course, they are also really good against aggro decks in general. So yeah, this is basically Life Coach's whole approach, and it's working out perfectly in the previous match and maybe in this one as well. Who knows? Have we seen him playing the curator? How do you call the card? Is curator or curator? Cura the curator. curator? Yeah, it was in the uh, warrior deck. Yeah, we've seen it. Yeah, it's, it's quite good because not only you get the four six stone, but you also can draw up to three cards. And I was surprised how good the card is actually, because as Dragon Warrior, you try to play on tempo, you get out of cards, and then the curator can actually refill your hand. Yeah, the Dragon Warrior, um, it's not as it's it's a de it's deceptively aggressive, but it can definitely play a strong value game. Uh, it's kind of like um, back in the day when Tempo Warrior was first introduced with uh, King Varian, and uh, that was also a very good va very very good value deck, and uh, this is pretty much reminiscent of that. Yeah. And here, Life Coach just getting a huge advantage, building up the board, yeah, being able to kill the bear, and uh, this will be tough to get through as a hunter, specifically with this hand. Houndmaster with no beast, are you forced to just animal companion? And if you get Leok, it's so bad. Yeah, like Arca, Arca Wonder right now does not have many options, but yeah, animal companion is pretty much the only one he can do. And gets the Misha, which is arguably the best one in this situation. I don't hate the trade. Corcoran leads into the 4-4. Is there anything better? Well, you could just um, use your smaller minions, for example, to uh, to end the weapon to kill off the Misha. If you want to play around Unleash the Hounds, for example, but that I also, I also uh, wouldn't blame him for just playing Corcoran here. Although Corcoran, you kind of want to keep sometimes. Um, uh, for the freezing trap, I guess, but there's Alex Rada's champion as well with the charge. You definitely don't want to play Twilight Garden, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, so Cochran, I suppose, sure. is the uh, only viable option if you want to use your full mana to the fullest. Yeah, I like trading with the Corcoran because it's like different schools. If you go with the Corcoran, you play around quick shot because then if you just kill with the small minions, you take not only you take four damage but also. Uh, Corcoran can just die to the quick shot or kill command. Yeah. But if you play like this, it's a bit weaker to unleash the hounds. But unleash the hounds is less possible, and it's still exactly. not good if there is a free form. Most anywhere. most mid range hunter lists nowadays run only one unleash the hounds. So that's pretty much the standard. So it's uh, always better to play around two offs than one offs. So life coach is in a pretty good position because this is an easy phase. You just deal as much damage as possible. I would not even hate playing fireworks going free to the face here. Uh, he decides not to attack with it. Is he going to play it anyway? Sure. Yeah, of course. I mean, more damage threatened right there. And Aka wonder how, how can he even come back from this? Sure, the tiger can attack into the monkey. I guess he can taunt it up, but is that even going to be enough over time? Well, he can kill commands the free four. He can attack with the with the bow maybe into the free free and kill the two two with the with the five five or just kill the free free with the five five kill commands attack with the bow. He's taking a lot of damage. 
and then maybe next turn try to hound master. I feel like it might be necessary to hound master now. You don't know if uh, I kind of we, we don't know if our commander is even going to draw another beast that he can synergize it with hound master in the following turn. And by the time hound master can be used, uh, like for a call of the wild, it might already be too late. So just to get that immediate value out of hound master, maybe it's the right time to play it right now. Well, the thing is, like, how Master can be also played on turn 7 no. with if there is a beast, if the if the cat is dead. So that's why I think I prefer um, the bow here. The trades. Yeah, that's that's something I was thinking in the beginning because you kind of want to keep your 5 free. But then I would probably prefer killing the 3 free with the 5 um, five, 5 because it doesn't matter if it has 2 health or 1. Well, it does kind of. There's obviously the Blood to Icker, there's a Ravaging Ghoul. Uh, that we see in Life Coach's hand, and yeah, it's, it, it against the deck like Warrior definitely matters uh, since Warrior does have a lot of tools to deal one damage. So do you think it was better than just having um, ten health? Because it's like you also get really low, and this is four damage to face. Yeah, it's it's tricky, you know, <laughs> but I, I guess uh, if if Life Coach ever has the cards that deal um, like the cards that deal damage in chunks, like. Corruptor, for example, then the game might already be pretty much over anyway. The one health, more or less, will not matter, most likely. And then you, you'd you rather just preserve the health on the minion, so it's harder to kill. Here's, by the way, really tempting to just play the Crusher, kill the cat, go one to face. Because if there is nothing to deal with the Dragon Crusher with just in kill command, you have a good chance to just win the game next turn. And uh, he is going for it, it seems. That's a really solid one, but there is the Freezing Trap. Yeah, and the Deadly, deadly Shot as shot. well. Yeah, I was I was going to mention the Deadly Shot would be pretty nice here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, and Akai actually gets it. So now he has the opportunity to kill off the 1-1 one -one with the bow and Deadly Shot that 9-9 nine -nine away. The question is though, do you play Freezing Trap and Hero Power or do you play Hound Master? Because how Master can save you in the future, there is no direct damage that uh, can be done, and Freezing Chop can block the yeah. Corcoran or the, the small dragon. You definitely want to get uh, some value out of the Hound Master, and you will most likely get it because it's un very unlikely that a life coach will clear all three animal companions after Call of the Wild has been played. Especially because he might not even want to clear all three animal companions, even even if he had the opportunity to do so. Because as we can see, Akka wanders at seven health. All it takes is like a couple more swings from Warax and one damage. So, yeah, Life Coach will most likely not clear all the animal campaigns, so Houndmaster will get its value. Yeah, and suddenly it doesn't look that great. I mean, he's still in a commanding position because he is having uh, Ika on 7 health and he can attack with a weapon, get him to 4. He can play minions, uh, maybe play the ghoul, and he's going for the guardian. Oh, I'm not sure I like it because if he gets a Corruptor, he will be missing the damage there, but on the other hand, it will be harder to kill the 2-6. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's hard. It's it's really hard, right? Uh, Life coach, of course, does want to threaten lethal here in this situation, which is the reason why he played the Twilight Garden. But yeah, of course, the taunt by the Misha will foil that plan. And there is the freezing trap, with which he probably can assume it's a freezing trap. Yeah, most l it's always the most likely secret. Oh, it's funny because he can attack and get it back to his hand and then activate the the dragon to be played. He's going for a ghoul first. It's it's pretty obvious it's freezing trap, right? You attacked. Yeah, I mean, proc. maybe Life snake trap. Left just dies right now, doesn't he? Uh, oh no, uh, never mind. He can play the cheaper Twilight Guardian. I yeah, it's a free yeah. six. So he freezes his Twilight Guardian to play the cheaper one. I was gonna say like he cannot replay the Twilight Guardian, but he obviously has a second one. So yeah, right now he tries to kill off the Hopper. He's gonna see the freezing trap, and uh, yeah is forced to play that other Twilight Guardian and try to survive that way. It's the second uh, Call of the Wild lethal. That will be Hathor killing the free six. Yeah, that would be, that would be exact lethal, actually. Uh, one over, even. Or two over. Right. So what can we do here? Um, th this is a nice kill on the free six. You can have the, the taunt as well. Because I can wonder is it for health, and there's a weapon. So he has also to deal something. Yeah, this is um, this is actually tricky because if you go for the abusive, obviously you cannot play both those big minions, which uh, seems like the smooth turn right here. However, of course, IK Wonder is probably not too unhappy about hero powering either. He's actually one off, I, I think. 
This is this is kind of crazy. If like he can help master the the Leoc and then yeah. abuse the Leoc, get into the free six, hero power, and go five to face. And that might be the play still because he actually puts life coach to one and he ends up with the with the taunt on board. Yeah, life coach now, and all of a sudden, life coach in a desperate situation. Pretty much all came down to life coach running out of options fairly uh, fairly soon because they, he didn't draw any card draw cards. There were no other drakes, there was no curator, obviously. So, yeah, um, eventually, after the initial aggression of a life coach, um, just struggled to make some good draws well, happen. Execute still wins if that's an execute. Does it win? No, it doesn't. Oh, execute was the winning thing to get. Yeah, definitely. But of course, Aka Wonder had to take the risk in this situation. So no execute for life coach. This seems uh, like it's over. He cannot have it taunt. He cannot go for the four five. So arm wrap. He can kill the free one maybe with the blood taker. And that's basically it. So hunter worked. The fact that he did like the life coach didn't ban hunter and allowed Hunter as a third pick. Like, he had a couple of chances. He had four bans to ban Hunter, but he didn't. And the, ban, uh, the Hunter countered the Warrior perfectly. Yeah, but uh, when we see Life Coach's remaining lineup, he obviously planned for that, that uh, Aka Wonder might potentially pick the Hunter and rely on that. Uh, when we see his remaining lineup, though, he has the Rogue, for example, yeah. which is um, very strong against um, mid-range uh, mid Hunter generally, if you draw your Saps against high mains or whatever. Then, yeah. Yeah, it's Haro pretty much uh, it's pretty much always game over whenever he's Rogue is up definitely in a good position to win versus Hunter. Hunter has to be super aggressive, but uh, Rogue has an edge. Um, what else does he have? The last deck is Priest. So Priest versus Hunter. What do you think about that one? Priest versus Hunter. Uh, I guess it depends a little bit on the Priest build. Um, we know the Hunter build, of course, right now it's pretty standard mid range Hunter. But yeah, the I guess the more proactive the Priest is, the better the Priest's chances are. Uh, we, I, for example, tried to. Uh, we've seen on the stream earlier. I played Hunter into RDU's priest, and RDU had like the dragon priest, so that was w a weaker matchup than it uh, would have been if he had just a control priest, because uh, the dragon priest, of course, is a super proactive priest and can just handle um, the hunter's aggression super easily. I find it so funny that AK Wonder is forced to play Hunter. Like, if somebody jo joins the stream right now, he sees like, yeah, he is winning with Hunter versus life coach, but AK Wonder would love to play control decks. He is all about control decks if possible. And uh, his control decks got banned. Yeah, well I mean Hunter is also kind of a controlling deck. Mid range Yeah, I mean it's not it's not as aggressive as uh, Hunter has used to be in the past. After all you're playing eight mana cards in your deck, so <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not really what you call an aggressive deck that much. But True. yeah of course it's 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 definitely a very proactive deck and um uh, but yeah I don't I don't think Aka Wonder minds that. All right, so Life Coach picked the Rogue, as you've mentioned, is a, is a nice counter. You do have a lot of ways to deal with... Uh, you have tempo plays. Like, you, you Hunter plays something, you backstab it. You you fight for tempo, you have those big cards that you can play, like Pillagers, and then timings sap. And uh, you should be able to kill uh, Hunter before they are able to kill you. So the best chance for AK Wonder is just to rush the things, uh, rush things as, as fast as possible. He got a pretty good hand with um, with the fire bat and the huge dog, so he has an opening that can deal some damage. He's a deadly shot for a possible Edwin or maybe gadgets in the future. And and we saw Aka Wonder also has the Strangle Throne Tiger in his deck, and that is obviously a really uh, strong minion against Rogue. It cannot be killed at all thanks to stealth, and Rogue yeah Rogue doesn't have any way of handling it. It doesn't it cannot even protect itself uh, from the hi from the tiger because the Rogue doesn't have any taunts. So uh, that will be guaranteed five damage or even more when it comes uh, when it enables kill commands or hound masters or abusive sergeants. So high main is uh, I mean Strangleton Tiger is definitely going to be a strong card in this matchup. There is an Edwin. So do you go for Edwin? Can you go for Edwin this turn to just coin the pillager? You kind of want to deal with the frog with the toad, but you can't. You don't have backstab. You don't have eviscerate. Yeah, Edwin is of course a risky play, considering that um, Life Coach already saw that Aka Wonder does run Deadly Shot in his deck. So uh, yeah, it's, it's, it, but it's a risk that Life Coach might need to take, uh, because it's such a high reward if it pays off. But uh, if you go for Edwin, how do you go for Edwin? Because it, this is not great anyway. Like whatever you do, it is not it does not look. Yeah, good. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, it doesn't. It, yeah, you don't really have the good spells for the prep, and yeah, I would I wouldn't be surprised if we see Life Coach just. Uh, coin out 
Kind pillager? Um, yeah, coin out the pillager. That's perfectly fine, I would say. It uh, challenges the toad. And yeah, it might not even die to the toad because the death rattle is like 50 50. Like you, even, you, uh, even then, even if Tomb Pillager dies, you get another coin which makes Edwin even better or the Violet Teacher even better. This is one of the most awkward hands I've seen uh, from the Rogue's perspective. And it can improve immensely oh, it quite fast. to go for the Violet Teacher, okay. All right. I guess he wanted to play around Deadly Shot no matter what. Well, he's also getting a board, so like with yeah. this he will be able to fight back and trade into minions and maybe get aggress aggressive himself. Yeah, but on the other hand, it's also a little bit... Uh, yeah, the one wa the one ones feel awkward against the death rattle like huge toad. So, if there was a hound, if there was to be a hound master, for example, in the situation, it, the toad would not only trade up, but it would also like threaten to kill those two one ones after um, after some uh, one of those one ones uh, runs into the huge toad. But then you're probably fine with it because you just want to drag the game. You should be winning the long game in a way as rogue. Um, because you will get the tempo cards. You don't want the, the hunter to just go into your face and don't give you a chance. So that right now, AK Wonder is in an awkward position where you want to go face, but then this board is something you have to deal with. So how do you deal with this board? Like You can kill command and attack with the 3-2 into the 5-1. It is perfectly fine to, go, uh, to always kill off everything that the rogue has. It's actually preferred. Um, to be honest, because eventually, if the game goes, if the game goes long, um, the hunter will have the advantage since uh, the hunter squeezes in more and more hero powers and eventually bursts, uh, bursts uh, the, the rogue world. down with uh, kill commands and quick shots and eagle horn bows. And there is Call of the Wild. So, Strangleful Tiger, as you've mentioned, unkillable at the moment, just 5-5 five, five stealth. But uh, this is the moment for Life Coach where he can pull the trigger and start being a bit more aggressive. He can't do anything with the 5-5. Five five. Yeah, of course. I mean, he has to put as much pressure as possible on the board. Uh, yeah, Isaac Drake, of course, uh, trying to get Life Coach better options here. He could have gone for like a semi-big Edwin here as well, but uh, yeah, getting additional options with the uh, Isaac Drake right now, also enabling spell damage for the Shadow Strike and the Eviscerate might be relevant too. On the other hand, for AK Wonder, now with the Unleash the Hounds, he can actually unleash a deadly shot. Other plays are a bit weird, because if you go Hound Master, you can't do much. Like, you just uh, go face and then can eat all yeah, the hero power. The Unleash the Hounds was actually amazing here in this situation, because otherwise, in order to guarantee himself a good deadly shot, he would have had to attack the 1-1 one -one with the Stranglethorn Tiger, and that doesn't feel good at all. So not only he clears, he also is able to get some damage to the face, and uh, just drags the game longer, Hamaster will be nice to get some extra damage and toned up, and then this is called the wild. Yeah, we see another nod to Life Coach's approach against Aggro with this rogue, uh, with a double, th <laughs> I thought Parsier. there was only one Parsier yeah. at first, but now we see the second one as well. Wow, uh, this is yeah, definitely a very strong anti-Aggro build here. It might even be uh, well positioned against Shaman, which uh, Aka wonder, should Life Coach win this game? Uh, Aka wonder probably will take the Shaman and then even with uh, those double Earth Ring Farseers, Life Coach might have a shot, if it, even against a face Shaman. Do we know it's uh, if it's a face Shaman? Uh, no, we haven't, because we only saw one game by Aka wonder uh, on stream, <laughs> and it, that was the True. Control Warrior. A lot of people are playing um, the Midrun Shaman now, though. But it's like, the Aggro Shaman is still really powerful. Yeah, but look so at this. Oh, face. man. Is he going to double Farce here? Yeah, it looks like it. Trying to establish some sort of board presence and, uh, yeah, wants to use the Eviscerate in conjunction with uh, Edwin later on, I guess. Another good card, by the way, because it pairs with whatever he decides to do. It's either Handmaster or Infested Wolf plus the Kindly Grandmother. Infested Wolf, in theory, uh, if it if it dies, you can get uh, yeah, the tokens. The, but the punish potential for Infested Wolf is just way too big in this situation. Fan of Knives will just completely demolish you. So uh, I like the Houndmaster play more here in this I situation. I like going for face with the, with the dog. You've seen double farce here. There is no no more health that uh, Rogue is going yeah, to get. There's no reason to make a trade, which uh, Life Coach would probably make us on his turn anyway in this situation. I doubt this dog will meet any other fate than uh, getting attacked by a by a farseer. So how much mana do you have? You you can prep Shadow Strike to kill the for free. Then you can coin, so you have eight mana. You can eviscerate. You can actually play everything. So you can eviscerate the free free. It's gonna be the biggest Edwin ever. Yeah, just get SI seven and just get the Edwin at the end of the process. And Cue the epic sex. 
Yeah, that's pretty good here. Oh man. Eviscerate I would I would actually even attack into the kindly grandmother with one yeah, of the Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see we're gonna see eviscerate to the wolf actually. Uh, to the to the dog. Yeah, eviscerate the dog. as much of the board as possible. Attack with both far series into the one ones. Kill the set the free two with the SI and play that Edwin. Come on, life coach. Time is running out and uh, you have to empty your hand. I l know you like to have options, but this is uh, this is beautiful. Well, I was uh, what actually attack. Yeah, there. he wants to push for face damage. Even he, okay. he doesn't think this one one is going to be a threat at all. And if he expects the call of the wild, the one one will not be a threat in this situation. So. Just push more face damage in this situation and threaten lethal, actually. Look at this. Life coach with <laughs> with so much damage on the board. 21 damage. Does it threaten lethal with Call of the Wild as well? So, like, the kindly grandmother does nothing. It just two damage to face. And, uh, yeah, you do threaten it lethal. Does if, it does 18. if... I mean, it does threaten lethal if Call of the Wild goes face. Right? Ah, okay. If you if you trade with the Huffer, it doesn't not. It's 15, okay. Oh, we might actually see that. No, I, obviously we won't see that because it's on board. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah you, you have to. You unless have to unless, have to. unless Aka order doesn't count. <laughs> wow. But yeah, it feels bad to be forced to run a huffer into the three three right now. Okay, so what wins the game? You uh, with SI seven and the weapon you kill Misha, and then you have fifteen damage and you two more damage. So the card that you can draw that wins the game. Oh, Eviscerate yeah. wins the game. We've seen only one. Mm. Is there anything else? Does he play one deadly poison? Because one deadly poison also wins the game. No, Do I doubt he can cram in deadly poison when he plays double Argent Square. Yeah, and double Forest here as well. Yeah. That's two damage! That's enough! <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Alright. Wow. So exactly cool. lethal. So with the, with the biggest Edwin, a 14 attack. Oh. That 40 damage, and this means that Rogue. Well, we expected that to happen, but it was still really close. It was a very close series. I mean, that that deadly shot unleash sequence uh, that Aka Wonder had at that point that was uh, pretty much threatening to close out the game. But double Farseer being clutch here in this situation, not only providing valuable health, but the board presence that was necessary to pretty much uh, race the hunter as well. So Farseer definitely the MVP in this matchup. I would if say. We not, not only that, but if also we the 12th of Edwin. <laughs> if we do the quick math, so uh, how much life coach uh, had in the in the in the end? How much health? He had like 12 or something. Life coach was uh, what? Life coach was down to seven, wasn't he? Sure. Because like so with double Farseer, we can probably say that he will be dead with no Farseers. Because half of them can go face and just finish the game. Yeah. Pretty much. Probably, more or less. But yeah, like Rogue is, Rogue is good versus Hunter. And now Ike Wonder has to find his own counter to Rogue, which shouldn't be that difficult because we consider Rogue as one of the weakest classes in the, at the moment. So what do you take? You, you say you say Shaman, possibly. That's the, That was the main uh, class that Ike Wonder picked. That was his first pick, so his best deck. Yeah. I mean, even though Aka Wonder, uh, even though Life Coach has the double Argent Squire and the double Farce here, depending on the Shaman build, we might, uh, if it's face shaman, we will probably still see the face shaman. I, mean, I would doubt that Aka Wonder wants to run Zoo into <laughs> that kind of uh, <laughs> that kind of rogue anyway. You don't right? want to play Zoo into that. Um, and Gra granted, it, granted, it is Zoo, right? We, we don't well, obviously don't know, but we can pretty much guess that whenever someone picks Warlock, it's going to be Zoo. Reno Lock, uh, unfortunately, doesn't see much love nowadays. Yeah, Reno Lock is uh, is much worse. Hand Lock, some people tried it. Shtanodachi tried it. I didn't really work that well, and. Um, also, like Thais tried the Malagos version of the Warlock. Yeah. Most of the time, it's, it's a zoo. The only question is, which zoo is it? Is it a more heavy discardy zoo or a more stable zoo with uh, councilmen? So. Yeah, we'll have to see what uh, Kawanda picks, but we will most likely see a Shaman. That's my prediction here, as we are waiting for the players to get ready. So this is uh, the match that will decide who goes out of the group. There, there are both winners, and uh, the, the one who wins it actually get, gets out to tomorrow and has a chance to to play for the for the big prize pool for the eight thousand dollars first place prize out of twenty five thousand total. Um, those guys are guaranteed uh, five hundred, so you're getting five hundred as well yourself, right? Even though you got yeah, eight. yeah, correct. Yeah, so it's it's pretty cool, like just getting invited, being able to chill, like play games, and you had your shot as well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, of of course, it's nice to get something for free, <laughs> pretty much. But uh, yeah, you you obviously want to come here to win. So uh, yeah, but now the players are finally ready, and we see, as predicted, 
the shaman and it is indeed a face shaman judging by this argent horse right and that lava burst yeah I, I do agree then sometimes you play lava burst in the midrange shaman but then you never play argent horse rider so I would expect Doom ha double Doomhammer from this deck for sure. Which means that AK Wonder is in a beautiful spot. This is also one of the most one-sided matchups, uh, which is probably 60% plus. <laughs> it's like yeah. the one-sided matchups in Hearthstone. Oh, 60% win rate, nice. Did, did Life Coach actually keep that Sap or did he mulligan it away? Uh, did he mulligan into it? Because I uh, I actually kind of like this Sap keep in this, uh, in this yeah. kind of matchup. You need to have something versus Totem Golem. Yeah, I, I mean, sometimes it's... It's super good to just have it against the um, Flame Wreath Faceless, basically. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's pretty much the same uh, thing as uh, with the Savannah High main, right? Because you spend the Shaman technically spends six mana on the Flame Wreath Faceless, and there's nothing as good as sapping a six drop. Yeah, you have to have it. Same with like uh, when you play Warrior, you keep execute. But this is a terrible start for Eki Wonder. And not only he has this minion that just dies the weapon, he just doesn't have a good follow up. Like he has Melston Portal that he might just cast here to have a minion on board and to get rid of the Divine Shield. But it's not something you want. You, you want the minions in those early turns. Trog, Totem Golem, Argent Squire of your own, and just uh, Tasker to Tamek even, Feral Spirit. Deal damage with the minions and then finish the game with the burst. If you get the burst early without the hammer, it doesn't look good. Specifically because of the double farseer, you've mentioned double farseer might help to win versus shaman. Yeah, for sure. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, life coach just plays the si seven combo less si seven. Yeah, kill the one two with the one one and the weapon attack. Play free free, just fine. I like. Yeah, it. I mean you got to put something on the board to challenge the totems, because otherwise uh, they're. Of course, li Life Coach doesn't know yet which kind of Shaman it is. He can only assume it's Face Shaman, because it's the most popular one, I suppose. Abusive and might give it away. But if there's, like, if he just pass, if he just passes, and uh, Aka Wonder was to play a Mana Tide Totem, for example, and Life Coach would be forced to use a spell on it to deal with it. I think at this point, Life Coach can safely say it's yeah. uh, Agro Shaman, because you see Abusive turn one. Which is doesn't make sense if you are a midrange shaman. Oh yeah, I, th and I forgot the abuse. If you're and right, and then you play Melstorm on turn two, which normally as a midrange shaman you will be like, yeah, one one, just play totem up. I don't care about the one one. Hmm. So I think this is pretty clear that this is a aggro shaman with a bad hand. Yeah, even even if, even without mana tight, like it's just always good to have minions threatening to kill totems, right? Yeah. Because yeah, whenever the the main the main weakness of the totems is of course that they are zero attack, so they get attacked for free basically, not dealing any damage. But when they go when they go unchecked, then sometimes they can be really threatening. A nice use of a rock biter instead of lightning bolt, um, because he doesn't want to overload himself too much to be able to cast the lava burst, which will be great versus the violet teacher. Violet teacher without any spells, but there's a second violet teacher. So li from life coach's perspective, like he just plays his game. This this favors AK Wonder. But Life Coach has a really honest hand. Just play a minion every turn, see what's up, at least for now. Yeah, Life Coach um, does have exactly what Rogue pretty much needs against aggressive decks. <laughs> I mean, against against Shaman, basically, right? You need those minions. You cannot just clog up your hand with spells. Like, whenever you have too many spells as Rogue, in many matchups, you just str struggle so much. Uh, whereas when you can just curve out your minions, especially with Argent Squire in the mix, then uh, you, your chances of winning are drastically going up. By the way, I really like Flame Tongue and Coin Totem here instead of Lava Burst because you do uh, kill the teacher and you and trade in the teacher. You kill the teacher and then you reduce the cost of thing from below for the next turn. So you keep the board. If you uh, if you get a healing totem, you are in a much better spot. Yeah, I actually also would have liked to see that, especially since um, this also is now a big tell for Life Coach. Um, the fact that l um, Lava Burst is gone already. Um, Life coach can evaluate the situation according to that, um, that he's gonna actually feel less threatened because lava burst, seeing lava burst on a minion is always a good feeling for uh, the, the opposing deck. Yeah. And uh, here do you go for the tempo swing? Just violet teacher prep sap. There is two, over, uh, two overload, you know, there's a coin, so it's a possible 7-7 seven, seven next turn because you can coin the 7-7 seven, seven if you have it. So maybe he will not go for the sap because of that, but no, sap actually gives you... Like once y once you have that Violet Teacher and are able to establish some board presence, especially when you saw Mez from Portal being used already, <laughs> then this is actually a really strong play by Life Coach. 
even if the 7-7 seven, seven comes down, you still have the Cold Blood and DSI to deal a lot of damage to it if you really need to. So, um, yeah, Life Coach wouldn't mind seeing a 7-7 seven, seven here. Yeah, he should be fine. And you've seen Maelstrom as well. Yeah. All so, right. um, yeah, and Hawaka, I wonder... He's just going for it oh for wow. the Cold Blood. Yeah, well, yeah. there's another minion on board. There's another 1-1 one, one and something that... Uh, Aka will have to deal with it. There is no AoE and there is no yeah. AoE. I mean, of course, like we said, uh, Maelstrom Portal is gone, so why not just uh, get another 1-1 one, one and have the 5-1 immediately? Sure, it's weak if there's like a second Maelstrom Portal or Azure Horse Rider, but even then, you still have the Violet Heatshare left over and may maybe more. So. so Aka Wonder goes for the Lightning Bolt to deal with the 5-1. It's uh, definitely it's one for one. It was Cold Blood versus that. <laughs> another uh, Cold Blood pickup. Which is not bad. He will be able to, to it's use. It's amazing it. here. But how do you how do you go for with it though? Because you can either cold blood first and then SI deal to damage, or you can SI and cold blood something to deal um, to have cold blood be bigger. I guess you can still weapon up. So with this, you can attack with the minion and with the weapon uh, into the free four and kill it with the SI seven. So that's yeah, much better. This guy's toast. And you do have the board. Yeah, I like it. That's a nice play. The problem for Life Coach is that he doesn't have any cards, but if there is no AoE that can make Aka Wonder come back, he's just going to lose to those minions. Yeah, especially like any minion that uh, Life Coach draws furthers his board position and any spell as well because of the Violet Teacher. So no matter what Life Coach draws here, it's uh, with the Violet Teacher on the board, it's kind of a win win situation. Yeah, he's forcing Shaman to kill his minions. <laughs> this is not something. Yeah, of course. One lava burst has been used on a <laughs> on the minion already. We might see the second lava burst follow suit right here. And I do believe you do coin the totem golem here afterwards. Yeah, I feel so bad because there is like this three one apprentice <laughs> that's just gonna completely demolish the totem golem. Yeah, but the life is out of cards. So backstab makes sense. You will be able to deal six to face. And uh, I can wonder, he doesn't have that many cards himself. No. What, what's, what's good though for Life Coach as well is that he can pretty much face tank uh, all of those um, all of those minions as well, dealing additional damage to to them by using his hero power, uh, because he knows like there's a lot of burst gone just because it was used on minions. The lava burst was used, the uh, rock buyer, the lightning bolt, pretty much everything, right? And now we can get a, a troll storm because this storm seems the best play. But if you storm, you can miss the free free, and if that happens, yeah, it's a fifty fifty. Yeah, and he Doesn't misses it. it. Oh, I can't I wonder, I cannot believe it. So mad. What about like just playing the five five though? If you if you play the five five last turn, it wouldn't be that bad as well because both minions have to trade in the five five. But I understand going for lightning yeah, storm because you, you want the lightning storm to hit in that situation. You need that five five to actually. Damage life coach, right? Like, what are you going to damage him with if not with this 5-5? Five five? Here he gets Arjun Host Rider, which is great because he'll be able to uh, flame tongue Arjun Host Rider, kill the 5-4, throw him up. No, he will not be able to throw them up. Uh, but uh, can you... Hmm, this is 5-7. Okay, so he's missing one mana there. So if you go flame tongue, no. It's just whatever happens is n not great. And now he can't flame tongue with horse rider into the five four, so he needs to horse rider into the three one. Yeah, he really wanted to see a taunt totem in this situation, I assume. Oh man, that just clears the board, <laughs> which oh, wow. makes flame tongue totem quite bad. <laughs> Even more anti aggro text by life coach in this rogue deck. I like it. Yeah, and uh, you know what? It's it might be good versus zoo as well, with all those cards. We'll see, we'll see, but uh, this is a terrible situation for AK Wonder. Can he even survive this? If he gets a taunt totem. If he doesn't get a taunt totem, he's just dead. And that will be it. The 5 4 can attack into the 5 5 taunt. Mm -hmm. Then the 4 3 goes to phase, and you cannot stop it. You cannot kill it. So that will be it. AK Wonder can wow. Um Well, it's not it for the match. It's just AK Wonder is in a really bad spot. What I'm asking myself right now is, how did Life Coach cram in all those cards? What did he cut? Is he not running Octodeers? <laughs> what is going on here? Maybe no Leroy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, definitely no Leroy, that's for sure. Because you go for the more board-centric approach yeah. um, to win the game. 
What else can you cut from the deck? So uh, you're con running conceal and like obviously this doesn't run like it's not the no the gadgets on no, no, not not the, not the YOLO miracle that uh, this is the other popular version of Rogue uh, with the questing adventures and conceals and uh, and Leroy and stuff like that. So I guess the, those cards are not in the deck, and instead of that, he's running those anti-aggro cards. Is it like board centric no win condition deck? <laughs> Without Auctioneer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like I said before, this uh, whole lineup of life code is pretty much designed to beat aggro, so he d never bans any aggressive classes. True. And it works so far for him. I mean, usually you would expect, because uh, you, you have the big four, right? You have the you have a Warrior, Shaman, Druid, and Warlock, right? And life coach letting Aka Wonder pick two of them. So he let the Warlock through on purpose, so Aka Wonder would pick it. But as we can see, Aka Wonder is actually not running Zoo. Yeah, surprise, surprise. He is actually not running an aggro deck. I can wonder he brought a Reno deck. We don't know which Reno is this. Like, he in the past, he favored the Cthulhu Reno. And he played it. He was able to qualify for the ACT with the Cthulhu Reno. Is he playing Cthulhu version again, or is it something different? I, I doubt that. <laughs> I think by now it's pretty much established that the Cthulhu Reno lock was not that amazing. I mean, of course it worked out for Aka Wonder. When he played it, it wasn't amazing, but he still played it and he was winning with it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it, it can get the job done. I mean, when you get the right pieces, of course, but uh, definitely a lot. And, and other versions like the Nazoth uh, Reno lock were more stable in that regard. All right, so let's see. Rogue versus Reno lock. And uh, most of the time when uh, I'm casting this matchup, it all depends on... Gadget Sun, I believe, because if Rogue is not aggressive enough and doesn't get the Gadget Sun to refill his hand, he will just run out of steam. Uh, Reno Lock has a lot of removal cards and should be able to um, to draw into them. Also has a lot of heal. So this yeah. will be interesting. This this might be kind of like a... I, I think I would favor AK Wonder in this situation. Yeah, I would say so too. There is not much burst in Life Coach's um, deck, which is basically the... Um, the the main win condition usually in this matchup, uh, you you have to like have some early pressure with your minions, and then you cannot finish off your uh, the Reno lock with minions because they yeah unless they charge right unless it's a Leroy, uh, because then Aka wonders uh, the Reno lock would just go for an AOE or he would just heal up and uh, yeah it's the, and the minions don't deal as much damage you just have to pressure with initial aggression by minions and then finish off with spells mm. and uh, Leroy. Pretty much, but yeah, this kind of deck by Life Coach will uh, Aka Wonder is probably more happy to see. So, what do you say? Should Life Coach pressure at this very moment and just coin SA seven go face with the damage? Well, I mean, yeah, if the more damage he deals early on uh, with the minions, the better it is. Um, the concept still remains true. Unfortunately, the, the core concept is still uh, still still applies here. But uh, the problem is just that Life Coach does not have much burst because he has all those anti-aggro cards. What's um, really brilliant is that we see the hand. We know what it is. But Life Coach had to assume what it is and guess what it is based on the fact that uh, there was nothing played on turn 1 and Life Top on, on turn 2. And he assumes a correct strategy. He knows what to do. And uh, at this point, he knows this is not a zoo this yeah. is probably control war like the the, <laughs> the warlock's hand would have to be pretty bad in order to not have a turn one or turn two play but we saw aka wonder did uh li like that's only the case when every card was mulligan and i guess life coach was paying attention to that as well yeah. so. this hand is not the best but it's uh okay overall i think you have to life up here just you will not overdraw there is no reason to play yeah, the, the beautiful thing about um this uh, kind of the, the Reno deck and having the Reno in hand, of course, is that you have the luxury to tap as much as you want early on, not being a, not to have to be afraid about the initial aggression by the rogue as, uh, at all. But you still need to get the AOEs at some point. That's yeah, well. of course, that's why you're digging for it with the life tap. So you you tap to get better better options, and then eventually you just uh, <gasps> he fights for yeah. the board with the ooze. Oh, okay, that's interesting. So basically, he goes for Ooze now. He will go for a vendor next turn. He wants to uh, either force Life Coach to create a weapon and start trading into his minions. Because what we said, like, a rogue needs to be really aggressive. And if AK Wonder gets him into the minion fight, it, it, would, it will turn into a slugfest. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. AK Wonder should be able to win. 
This is, uh, I would actually love to see Edwin here in this situation. Um, the thing about Edwin is, especially if you cannot conceal it, you cannot really make it as big uh, as you want because um, you can only make it really big if you have like preparations, I guess, um, or if you, if you go, if you accumulate more mana for the spells uh, to combo Edwin with, right? But um, you generally would like to play Edwin earlier in this matchup because uh, of the threat of Siphon Soul. It's a solid 4-4. It's uh, resistant to Hellfire. I think yeah. that's a solid play. Health, yeah. All AoEs that um, Warlock could have at this situation would not be able to deal with uh, Edwin. Sure, there's like some single target removal, Shadow Bolt, for example, would be able to deal with the Edwin in this situation. But of course, it's just a one-off in the deck anyway, so <laughs> why would you play around it? So now AK Wonder, a pretty s easy play, uh, following up on the on just playing minion every turn to, to be able to fight back. Um, back to life coach. Uh, he can either ignore it or try to kill it. Is there a good way to, to deal with this 3-5? Because if you think about Defender of Argus being played next turn, even though it will be turn 5 and it's only 4 mana, then the 3-5 will have a good trade versus Edwin and it's still 3-2 uh, after that with the taunt, you have to deal with it. So do you try to kill it? This turn? Life Coach definitely can afford to um, clear this uh, um, refreshment vendor, and I think he has to as well because if he lets it live, not only does it uh, does he give the Aka Wonder the opportunity to um, capitalize on that by buffing it with a uh, Power Overwhelming or um, Defender of Argus, but also a potential Shadow Flame, for example, or just like him being able to attack into the Edwin and like Hell Firing or whatever. Um, just gives Aka Wonder too many opportunities to punish Life Coach if he ignores this refreshment oh, vendor. Oh, and I would say also Life Coach doesn't mind attacking into it because he does, after all, have Earthling Farseer to heal Edwin up to get it out of range of AoE as well, once again. Yeah, alright, so I was going to ask you if there's a way to play around Hellfire at all, but uh, you can just healing back Edwin and there is the Hellfire. Yeah, look at that. You, if you ignored that uh, refresh uh, refreshment vendor right there, the punish would have been huge in this situation. Hellfire is still a good pickup. That's an AoE he wanted to deal uh, with the board, but he is dropping a bit low. Uh, Harrison Jones is not great. It will not be able to deal with yeah. the weapon. There are no weapons. There is occasional Jaraxxus, of occasional course, Jaraxxus but we, we, saw, we see already there's Alexstrasza in Aka Wonder's hand, so I doubt that he plays Alexstrasza and Jaraxxus in the same list. Probably not. Well, maybe. Maybe. He is a greedy player. He was playing Cthulhu version. But Harrison Jones at least is a 5-4. So you can play it to have some more pressure on board if you want to keep Azure Drake for the next turn. Yeah, you can keep Azure Drake around um, for the eventual spell damage, um, but I like just playing Azure Drake um, rather than the Harrison because you want to draw the cards, so you want to get more options to have better turns oh, in the follow-up. We might also just see um, Earthring Farseer in this situation, maybe, to heal up Edwin again. And then weapon up so that you can play Deadly Poison with the 5-drop next turn. Yeah. It's not terrible, just keeping the, the board going on because of the Mortal Coil. But the actually, Mortal Coil, if there will be Mortal Coil, it will be cast. Okay. Yeah, of course, of course. But there's other stuff as well. Dark Peddler, maybe, into Mortal Coil. Well, there's stuff that can kill the Edwin, for sure. Demon Wrath. Yeah, Life Coach choosing the more mana-efficient approach and plays the Azure Drake instead. Look at that guy. The curator. So what is what is he uh, what is he getting with the curator? You can get the dragons. Well, there's the Alexstrasza, of course, that you will get. Or um, Azure Drake, maybe if you play one. Yeah. What kind of beasts, though? Maybe you play this or one warlock. beast. What is a beast in a warlock deck? Stampeding Kodo is the only one that comes to my mind. That's not a bad beast. Huh. This is interesting. And a Murloc. What Murloc are you playing in the deck? Because Finley doesn't sound <laughs> that great. You have the best hero power you can get. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe like a Bluegill, Bluegill warrior. It too, yeah, Bl Bluegill might not be that terrible, actually. Because early game, it trades well versus minions. And then it's always like something to deal extra damage. So many options. All right. So back to 30. Life Coach has to find a way to deal that damage. And also, there is this Reno Jackson now. So we've mentioned Shadow Flame. Reno Jackson is dangerous. Yeah, but at this point, um, I don't know. In order for Life Coach, the game is already getting into the later stages. And uh, Life Coach now has to realize, after the Reno has been dropped, that he has to make something happen right now, uh, eventually, or Aka Wonder is going to accumulate the mana crystals and the resources necessary to completely lo lock a Life Coach out of the game. 
so I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Life Coach does goes all face with. Oh, okay. Did yeah, he I mean, attack with the Azure Drake? Yes. Yeah, he did, he did. But I, it didn't seem like he was too happy about this play at all. He's yeah, you know, this is a lot of damage into the 4-6. The I mean, he could have... No, actually... Hmm. You probably had to do it if you want to play on Shadow Flame. Yeah. And that's the color we've mentioned. There's Twilight Drake and the Corrupted Seer. That's a nice Murloc to have. There's another AoE you can... Yeah, it's, um, yeah, you don't have to run Demon Wrath in that case, but uh, Akka wanted to choose to run both, which is, which is nice, I guess. You can combine... Demon Wrath with Corrupted Seer have a have a flame strike for Warlock for nine mana. The Curator is a very interesting card. I think we're we're going to see it use more and more in different decks. Yeah, definitely is a very good value card. Um, uh, yeah, I I, I'm, I was just confused a little bit because sure Kodo is a good card, Twilight Drake of course, and uh, Alex Straza fits in there as well. Uh, but yeah, do you really? Want to play seven mana card draw minion in the warlock deck that just life taps anyway? But I guess the taunt is very valuable too. So yeah, yeah, I'm, I, I guess Aka Wonder might be onto something here with this curator. Well, I've seen curator being played in Dragon Warrior in some Druid versions. In Agro Druid, is being played for sure, and uh, some people play it in Paladin. That's why I s yeah. from time to time I see crap. Yeah, I mean, oh, nobody can deny that curator is an amazing card. I'm just wondering why in warlock where do you have access to life tap? Because you get those cards for free in a way. You get a big taunt, you get a, a really good value card, and you also get free cards out of your deck, specific cards. Yeah, of also. course. It also thins out your deck, of course, right? Like if you if you manage to actually draw three cards like Aka Wonder did, uh, you will get it will be more and more likely to actually draw into the cards that you need, like Reno, for example. Twilight Drake and a Defender of Argus is something you can consider, but then if there is a sap, there is a damage you're taking. So I understand the Siphon Soul into the biggest, the biggest minion. He wants to set up this Corruptor Demon Wrath. The mini flame, the Warlock Flame Strike. <laughs> yeah, right yeah, the Warlock Flame Strike basically, and it will work. That's nine mana, the four damage to the board. And Life Coach, there's no way Life Coach will see this coming. Although he did see three cards being drawn, so he has, he's got his gears got to be turning in his head. What kind of Warlock could it be? Yeah, is it? Finley, is it Logil? Because I don't see, I don't think we've seen anyone play this kind of thing yet. Not yet in constructed. I not not in tournaments as well. I've seen it on other, but it's not the obvious thing you can think of. Like I was thinking about Logil, honestly. I was thinking like, what is the what is the Murloc you want to play? That's actually a, a high cost Murloc. So this is actually quite awesome. Eka. just we are going to witness for the first time, yeah. maybe in competitive play, that. The, the Warlock Flame Strike <laughs> for, for 9 mana. Life Coach pretty much all in here. I mean, he has to do it. And he then realizes, yeah. Job done. Like, Game Wrath and Yeah, he's like, okay, we got it. Yeah. Fan of Knives with prep. Well, you have to Fan of Knives to see what you can draw. Wow, we see here Life Coach so close to actually closing out this game. Only 9 health remaining on Aka Wonder's side, but. No resources left, no more minions, and the <laughs> yeah. There's like Straza. The spells don't do anything, and of course there's still Alex Straza. So as life coach, you can hope. Uh, if you get uh, Auctioneer, maybe you will be able to just start rolling the spells. We haven't seen Auctioneer from him yet, I believe, but I just really doubt he's not playing any of them. I would be very surprised if there are no Auctioneers in that list, but it could actually be true. I mean, after all, it's Auctioneer is not a good card against aggro. So yeah. <laughs> you might want not want to not play it. Well, was Aka, could Aka Wonder actually go aggressive here with Alexstrasza and just go face with it? Well, Alexstrasza is eight power, right? Oh, is he going for Defender of Argus? Yeah, instead? yeah, that's also let's just good. let's just secure. <laughs> yeah, Aka Wonder wants to secure his board position here first. Oh, that's and, uh, also fine. Yeah. Fifteen health on the minion. He doesn't need to heal himself. After all, he saw what was it? One or two eviscerates already. So, uh, yeah, he d he's not afraid of dying here anytime soon. And the 414. <laughs> yeah. How much damage is there after Alex Traza? You can Alex Traza in PO 6 plus 4, uh, 10, 14, 1 off. Oh, Leroy. So with Leroy, it's uh, 10 plus 10, 20. Is he 1 off? Yeah, I mean. 
Aka Wonder can take his fair time. No, he does, he does. It's over because Defender of Argus is enough. It's like you have enough mana, especially with Defender of Argus buffing like twice. As long as Aka Wonder plays it super safe here, there's like no way for Life Coach anyway to win this. But he has lethal, <laughs> so. Yeah. It just even if he even if he had le like even if he doesn't go for lethal here, he's still gonna win. Yeah, true, true, true. He's like in a commanding position. So Lyra is going to spawn four whelps. But what? they won't matter at all. Uh, this means that AK Wonder is going to win versus Rogue, and we are going into the last game of the match, which is going to be this Warlock versus Priest. And that Priest was supposed to be very good versus Zoo, but how good will it be versus Reno Lock? And normally Handlock had a big advantage versus Priest, specifically because of Jaraxxus. We haven't seen Jaraxxus, but what do you think? Well, like I mean, think? over if the history of Hearthstone has shown us anything, that then that it's the one thing that control Warlocks are heavily favored against Priests of any kind. So Even the, the dragon curve, because that's probably the curved dragon priest that we've seen from. Yeah, unless unless the the best chances that a priest might have against a control style warlock is if it's like a combo priest, uh, which tries to burn the opponent out in one turn. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, out of thirty, I I doubt that life coach plays that. After all, he is teammates with RDU, and RDU had the dragon priest and. This is exactly what Life Coach is bringing here as well, as you can see. Before we start, I also want to mention that Life Coach was practicing for this match so hard that he actually damaged his hand. That's why. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is tough Hearthstone. All right, so the Dragon Priest we've seen from RDU. Uh, it was pretty successful versus you specifically. He was able to pre-zero you with the Priest, I believe, right? Yeah, Dragon Priest um, is definitely a very strong deck to have against aggro, I would say. Uh, if you if you manage to stay if you manage to stay ahead on board, right? Once the dragon priest actually falls behind, it's very hard for the dragon priest to make a comeback. I would say. So sure, there's cards like bookworm, I guess, that kind of can swing the tempo back around. But uh, yeah, the card is yeah. still unexplored, I believe. It seems very strong on paper because it targets violet teachers and uh, fandrels. It's like a cabal shadow priest, but a bit better. Yeah. Like maybe a kodo, but a bit better than kodo. Because Cabal is like stealing stuff, so you gain something. Yeah, as long as the thing is, as long as Priest is able to curve out properly, um, it should never against any kind of aggressive deck. It's, sh it's it's very unlikely that it can ever fall behind on board because the overall stats, uh, the average stats of like Twilight Weld and oh, Wormrest Agent are just so insanely high. Are we looking at the jeweled scarb right now? I believe we are looking at the jeweled scarb, which is a beast. So we can get it from the curator. Yeah, and it's, it's another a, a beast. It's a battle cry card, so we can double it with the with brown bronze beard. And what can you get off of it? Um, the the warlock specific shadow bolt, demon wrath, I void like terror. I, I like it. I like this deck. I like this this warlock deck from Make a Wonder. And Make a Wonder in the past, he was always bringing those interesting uh, control warlocks. Maybe this is the the, the new thing that we can play on ladder as well. I mean, it's basically a curator Reno lock, right? Let's just call it what it is. <laughs> Let's call it AK Wonder Reno Lock. Can we? Can we give him that? The AK Wonder Curator Reno Lock. Yeah. A little bit too much of uh, too long of a name, I think, but I guess we can make it work. AK Lock. AK Lock sound, sounds good. Anyways, uh, what do you think about those hands? In the in the beginning, it didn't didn't look that good for Life Coach, but right now he got Twilight Guardian. Uh, he has Shadow Ward Pain as well to deal with the 3-4 if he wants to. Priest of the Feast is a big minion that will be able to heal him. So he has a couple of options to just build up the board. Yeah, build up the board is true, but he will not have a way of dealing with this uh, Fiola. But I don't think he minds. He could, sure, he could Shadow Ward Pain it, but he doesn't really need to pay attention to this Fiola, I think, unless he wants to really play around Hellfire clearing the entire board. But even... If Hellfire does clear the board, which it would if it if he plays for the Priest of the Feast or the Twilight Guardian, then Life Coach is still the one with the initiative. He play he's the first to play a minion. He's gonna follow it up with an Azure Drake. So yeah, I think he's just gonna be aggress <laughs> stay aggressive here. And it's pretty much also what he has to do uh, with this deck against the Rune Lock, just like he pretty much just like he had to do it with the uh, with the Rogue. He just had to stay on the aggression, just keep up the pressure, and not worry too much about. Uh, AOE. The sleeper cards might be um, 
the the new, the new cards from Karazhan that actually give you the dragon. And again, just get the dra the big dragons that are hard to deal with. As the versus you are you got like uh, new Deathwing or the Nefarian, get some cards from Nefarian that are actually good. You can, if you get Nefarian and there is Jaraxxus, you are able to get maybe um, the Sacrificial Pact. So there are some interesting things that can happen in this game. But for now, it just will be playing minions, trying to trade a bit, fighting for board con board control. Oh, I don't, I don't like this attack at all. I don't know. Why not? It's just, yeah. I mean, the, he can just uh, on board already. He can just get the value here by healing up the um, priest of the feast and attack into the Fiola, uh, which and clear the Fiola, which otherwise wouldn't be possible um, if he ignored the priest of the feast. What? But yeah, and now even, but even more so now with the Holy Nova, he can actually clear both minions and his priest of the feast survives. Yeah, this so is a beautiful Holy Nova. Yeah, this is. Uh, I definitely would not have made this attack like that. But he made it specifically because he hopes there is no Holy Nova. So he yeah, wants I, to. I guess he just wants turn. to put damage on the Priest of the Feast, basically, right? To be able to kill it off easier. But yeah, this Holy Nova pretty much punishes that plan. Life Code being able to clear both minions instead of just one. But then on the other hand. <laughs> yeah, is I, it I suppose Akka Wonder was expecting that hero power on the Priest of the Feast to trade the Fiola away. And then, of course. Koto would have made short work of this uh, Priest of the Feast, but oh, he actually decides to ignore the Koto as well. Yeah, and I mean, Life Coach uh, staying true to this game plan overall, he needs to pretty much ignore what Akka Wonder has and just pressure, yeah, pressure him because the more time you give the Reno Lock, of course, the more time you give him to draw into those uh, combo pieces or uh, to draw into Reno himself. Yeah, because the, b the big thing also is that uh, if he goes head to head, uh, Life Coach versus the, the Warlock, he's just going to run out of cards. Um, Warlock should have more draw possibilities there than is, the Priest. There is, of course, um, the Nether Spite Historian as well. We saw uh, we saw it before in RDU's deck, uh, which is probably the same build. So yeah, Life Coach said, Life Coach said it, confirmed yeah. that this is exactly the yeah, same Bran, deck. Yeah, Bran plus Nether Spite Historian is a pretty good way to get back in c terms of card advantage. Yeah, especially if you get the Farian, right? You get even more cards. Yeah. There. But uh, you need to have some board anyway, because if you give too much time to Warlock, this is the faceless uh, Leroy combo. So AK Wonder will have access to a lot of burst if he gets enough time. So you also fight against time. It's not just that AK Wonder will be defending himself. He's also trying to get those combo pieces to win. Interesting decision to be made by Lab Coach here. Sure, you, like you see the one mana available, you see the Twilight Whelp being drawn off as effect. But of course, um, if you play the Twilight Whelp, you don't have an enabler for Twilight Guardian anymore. So what do you value more? Having the, uh, the, the one drop on the board that gets buffed or having the buffed four drop? I would not play it because uh, you want the Twilight Guardian on the next turn and you want to have the Blackwing um, Technician. Yeah. Plus you want to keep this 2-1 uh, as a battery. If you get Nether Spite Historian, as you mentioned, you want to have the Dragon in hand. Yeah. And you, ne you don't want to have this Twilight Guardian as your battery because you always want to have the Dragon. Exactly. I mean, just having... It's, it's not like the one drop will pose that much of a threat to the Warlock anyway. So it's definitely the best dragon enabler, dragon synergy enabler to have in your hand overall. So there's a nice way to deal with this uh, zero seven with the Shadow Ward Pain. Is there anything else you can do? Holy Nova, probably not yet. If you go Shadow Ward Pain, you'll have five mana left. You can go for the Guardian. That's that's all right. You can even go for the phase. You don't have to kill the free two. Just like Shadow War Pain, play the Twilight Gardens, the 3-6, go for the face, put them at 13, and uh, you're still good. Yeah, the, whole, the Holy Nova seems appealing here because it clears both minions with, along with the attack of the other Drake, but you don't put anything on the board um, besides that. The, the, the therefore, the Shadow War Pain is definitely the better choice in this and situation. you don't pressure at all as well. And yeah. Shadow Pain and Twilight Guardian not only build up the board, um, the 3-2 does not really damage the 3-6 that much. And even if it doesn't, if there's a Hellfire... Well, th uh, we actually know that there's a Hellfire and Mortal Coils that will be able to clear the board. But I'll be fine just pressuring. And Holy Nova is dealing a couple of points of damage, so that that might help you to finish the game. Just burst the Warlock down before he gets the Reno. Yeah, Lifeco just keeps smashing the Warlock's face with his dragons and 
There is Jaraxxus oh, in wow. the deck. There is the Jaraxxus. He does play both. Yeah, I told you well Aegon is greedy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that is the definition of greedy right there. Jaraxxus and Alexstrasza in the same deck. So they just clear with the Hellfire, like attack the, the, the free 6 with the free 2, Hellfire, then Coil, enjoy card. This is 5 mana, you still have 2 mana left. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, no reason not to do it. You could even life tap. I mean, you see it's a Dragon Warrior, it's not going to have any sort of burst. Um, It can have Corruptor, but... Yeah, Corruptor and Holy Nova, those are the damage spells you're expecting. And that's never going to deal more than f 5. So it's life coach. What's the biggest board you can build? Blackwing Technician and Cabal Shutter Free. Oh, you can't play Cabal because there's not enough mana, so just a Warper Stage. That's not that threatening, unfortunately for him. But he has Shadow War Death for Alexstrasza if it's being played later. No, Brand Bronze Beard. Heal up with for 8 with the Refreshment Vendor. Funnel Cakes. Double Funnel Cakes. Delicious. So this prolongs the game. Because Life Coach will not be able to deal that much damage. And, but he can steal Brown Bronze Beard with Cabal Shadow Priest. Yeah, that is a very important steal right there. Because then, of course, Brown is a big threat. Um, it can get even more value with a uh, card player on, as you can see, Dark Peddler, for example. And, yeah. Wait, where? I'm, I'm, I'm curious, where did this uh, Power of Warming come from? Uh, he did draw it. Wait, he placed two Power of Warmings in his deck? Oh. Um, oh, actually, I haven't seen the second one. Now I'm curious as well. Because yeah, <laughs> it's like he, didn't, he, didn't he plays a Reno deck with a, a, two, a two of. That's I've also. A I've seen bit weirder things. Yeah. I've seen that the HCT, I think it was US uh, NA HCT, uh, one player was playing double Twilight um, Drake, double <laughs> Mountain Giant Reno Lock. And he was able to play. Oh, this is so weird. Yeah. Do you really kill it? Like, you've seen... You know the Murloc is there as well. So, like, if you attack into it, Murloc can be quite weird. Yeah, Life Coach t was tempted there for a bit to play around the Shadow Flame, but decided to know I still gotta stick true to my game plan and just go face more. Hope there is no Reno anytime soon. There's actually double PO in this deck. Interesting. Okay, so Siphon Soul seems good into the 4-5 overall, but before you Siphon Soul, you kind of want to get the third power of overwhelming. Not really. Well, I mean, with <laughs> once it gets discounted by Saracen, <laughs> you can get a huge combo. You can one-shot the one shot the Priest even if you don't Alexstrasza him. That's true, but aren't you ready for action? With Footman, you can block attacks and you are struggling for health. Yeah, way. right now I wouldn't be uh, too surprised if he picked up the footman. Yeah, I agree with this. And we're he definitely going to see He wanted the moral coil for sure, sure. or uh, like one damage card. So Elven Archer, Stone Dust Bore, or Coil, so that he can kill the two four. Uh, he didn't get it, so foot footman is the best card there. Quite tough. Yeah, now we have to see if. Life coach can actually punish this uh, <laughs> with like, uh, like uh, take take advantage of this brand that he just stole with the cabal and he does in fact he draw has the Azure Drake two cards with Azure Drake and then with uh, Holy Nova he can deal free damage to the board. Wow, this board. that's insane! That's a pretty good turn overall. And uh, if there is no answer, AK Wonder can just die get rushed by the priest. You can double Azure Drake, deal free damage to face, plus then follow up with seven more. Just uh, leave Aka Wonder at six health with you having a full board. Well, you see, you see Aka Wonder jamming all those cards, and that usually no no Reno Lock ever runs, right? You have the Curator and all the cards that it fetches, the double power overwhelming for uh, whatever reason, and then what do you even cut? That, that's the important question. What do you cut from your deck? Maybe Shadow Flame because like you have where's Shadow more Flame? AOE where's Shadow Flame? Where's Twisting Nether? We haven't seen those cards yet, and those are cards that he actually needs right now desperately. I mean, if he, if he, I, I can imagine he cut uh, Twisting Nether maybe, but Shadow Flame probably not. Not especially not if you want the power of warming. Well, he did have to cut something, even though you play one offs, um, or most of the one offs, because he's playing double power of warming. Still, um, do you see a way for him to survive this? Next turn, we we see four damage from the Azure Drake. So on board we have four, eight, eleven, and then Corruptor can deal six damage because of Brown Bronze Beard. So it's seventeen damage. So whatever happens, is is he dead? Whatever happens here, 
because he can just heal himself to 15 and there is more than enough yeah i don't see i don't see any way out of uh this for ak wonder it seems like wow. life, life coach got it and this will mean that life coach will be going through to tomorrow at the back of the priest ak wonder desperately tries tries to heal himself and hopes that priest doesn't have it but yeah oh man Brand All right, Corruptor. Corruptor. And uh, we have also Lothar with us. Uh, I'm not sure if you were... Yeah, I was just laughing because... Did you see Life Coach Jackson? He's just so joyful. <laughs> <always> <laughs> <when> he's <like laughs> well, well he, he definitely did not expect to win. That's why his reaction was as, as it is right now, probably, yeah. right? I mean, there, Aka Wonder was... Oh, lineup um, matchup-wise here in this situation, a huge favorite, but... Well, in the previous match as well, like against yeah. the Rogue. It was like huge, hugely favoring him. Th that's correct. Well, yeah, that one he won, of course, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah. Uh, then against the Priest, we we already expected it to be over by then, uh, just by seeing the two classes uh, face off it against each other. But uh, Life Coach making it work, putting the aggression to Aka Wonder, and Aka Wonder struggling to deal with it because he plays all those weird cards, and uh, I don't, I d we didn't see any good answers to the board of Life Coach. And also, Aka Wonder did not manage to draw Reno, which would have been amazing as well. Yeah, well, he had really it in his opening hand, and he didn't keep it. Keep it. That was really weird. Yeah, because normally uh, you don't think about Priest being aggressive. So, like, you auto keep Reno versus all aggro decks, but then versus Priest, you kind of think like, all right, I'm going to go minion versus minion. I just need to kill all the minions, yeah. and then Priest will not have uh, yeah, but burn at all. Either this, this, this Priest is like. A druid on steroids, basically. But would you keep Reno versus Druid? Not really. Like you kind of want to deal with the early minions first. Oh. Instead, it's not that fast. Like normally, um, you have minions. Like you play versus aggro decks, you will you will be able to kill the minions with the early AOEs, and then you play Reno, you you, you win the game most of the time. But versus Priest, the, the minions are more resilient, I believe. So it's like, would you keep Reno versus Dragon Warrior? We don't we don't even Probably. know if Aka Wonder actually knew. That what kind of priest life code is running, right? You should mm. know looking at the G2 and what they said and the, and the Usually we have very similar lineups when it comes to deck building, so you can make an estimated guess, I would say. Yeah. Yeah, but did uh, did Eka wonder actually see it? That's the that's the only that's the other question. Oh come on, you can see the VODs, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was the first match during the day. But yeah, those highlights man the you know what's really funny about this rogue? It's being tailored to win against the aggressive decks. Yeah. So it's really way different from what you usually see um, from a rogue um, with Gaz decks. So can you so spoil so there is no action here, no action here in the deck? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, that's what you just said. <laughs> yeah, it seemed, it seemed like there is no action here, but I've seen w weirder things. So. Yeah, I mean, prep prep will always be good, even <laughs> especially with Edwin, as we can see. And versus aggro specifically as well, like you want yeah. to keep prep in your opening ends. Yep. So, uh, the Edwin finishing up the game here. It was kind of um, lucky to draw the two damage, because when you think about it, there was, o there was only one Eviscerate left and one Cold Blood in the situation, right? And this is the menace of the Rogue. Yeah, this is the last deck, but like, if you look at Aka Wonder's hand, he didn't even... Uh, well, it, it, this, this game he, he won because he had the Hellfire, but like at that time the hand didn't look that well. Without the Hellfire, they will probably also favor Life Coach, so he was he was close there. By the way, is um, Aki Wonder playing Twisting Nether in this deck? We oh, we didn't we see it. it, and considering that he's playing so many weird unconventional cards, um, he has to cut something from the deck. Yeah, especially in the high end, right? Because if you play Curator with the Corrupted Seer, that, that we currently see, um, seems weird to fit everything, especially with Alex Straza. Jarax, yeah, and yeah, stop eating Kodo. Wow, there's so many cards that you usually don't play, right? Yeah, but it's still pretty cool to like bring your own deck. So this is something we talked about before the tournament of R, that in this specific format people can innovate. We see this deck from AK Wonder. We see Rogue from Life Coach. This is not the standard Rogue you see on ladder. This is not the standard hunt, uh, Warlock that you see on ladder, which is great. Like those p those players have to adjust. Like. Life Coach was assuming this Warlock is probably an aggro deck, a mm -hmm, zoo deck. Mm -hmm. He had to quickly readjust his strategy when he saw the life tap on turn two. Yep. So this tournament really favors skill and planning. And, uh, and Life Coach um, is through. So we have one G2 uh, player that actually goes through to the second he day. He is defending the honor of the team. That's G for sure. G2's last hope. Yep. And uh, this is the final moment of the game. 
Lab coach taking it 3 2 against AK Wonder. Uh, on back of his priest. Hi, Edwin. How are you doing? Hey, yeah, very good. Sitting here again, that's an awesome feeling. For sure. Yeah. Uh, so, when you saw the Warlock and you saw its uh, Reno Warlock, what did you think? Not good. <laughs> that's good, right? Abort, abort. The two last decks were not favored against it at all. Uh, no, <laughs> not yeah. really. I mean, Priest against Reno Lock is pretty crappy. It's, yeah. it's pretty uh, bad, but yeah. you managed to to keep being aggressive and pushing his buttons all the all the time, and he just uh, wasn't able to like stop you, just doing the damage, also stealing Bran and winning with his own Bran. Right, right, yeah. I mean, it's it's really like two damage there, three damage here. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I we're mean calling normal. Yeah, that's the chip damage is really important with that priest, right? You don't have any kind of burst as uh, at all. The Bran actually managed to give you the burst right. that you would maybe need if the um, if the situation on the board would have been more rough mm -hmm. to you, right? Yep. Because you still had huge board, so it was it was not the problem to deal the consistent damage. But usually the game goes way differently, right? But at the same time, we don't know if if uh, AK wanted to play twisting Nether in this deck. No, okay. that's the thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I I guess we can assume a lot of AOE in Arena Warlock, and I think it's um, well. Usually, I'm not on the side who just plays the yellow and green cards and mm -hmm. hope that my opponent doesn't have an, a, any AOE. But in the last two games, I just uh, were, uh, I found myself in this role just playing my stuff. If he has AOE, like uh, in the rogue game, mm -hmm. he, he had AOE, so I lost. And uh, yeah, in the other game, he didn't have AOE, so I won. Yeah. So very <laughs> That's pretty yeah. much yeah. all comes <laughs> down to. Yeah, you yeah. described so it perfectly. How, how did it feel? Because normally you play decks that uh, require a lot of thinking, a lot of planning with every mm -hmm. card, and uh, this time you had just like, yep, those are my cards. I'm just playing them and em em emptying my head uh, and emptying my hands mm -hmm. as well. And my head. And yeah, my and your head <laughs> as well. So <laughs> did it feel good? Was it Hearthstone that like you, you want to play this kind of Hearthstone, or would you love to just get back to those thinking decks? Uh, thinking better uh, decks is uh, obviously more appreciated, sure. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. But you play those decks because you require you were required to build a specific lineup, right? So it's um, those decks are being built because you have a complicated lineup in general, a complicated format, right? Right, right. Yeah, that's right. But also in general, I mean, they're uh, from the specific classes uh, nowadays because of the removal of some AOE. Uh, you kind, of, I mean. 80% of the decks are curved decks, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you don't want to play the 20%, you have to play some of the curved decks as well. So, how, the, how do you enjoy the format with nine classes and then pick, pick, ban, ban, pick, and stuff mm -hmm. like that? Uh, very much. Very much. I mean, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> Radu and Thais are not uh, in the tournament any longer, but we, re we really spent one and a half weeks preparing uh, or uh, for preparation simply because we found the format very exciting. And, um, yeah, it was something new, so that was a lot of fun. All right, good to hear. Stuff. Well, hopefully we'll have more tournaments with innovative formats, right? Because that brings a lot of, uh, let's say, diversification of mm -hmm. the uh, of the decks that we see uh, during the broadcast. Yeah. So I'm pretty happy that we actually s have seen so much Priest today. Mm -hmm. Like we had uh, eight matches so far, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and five games were already won by Priests. <laughs> Sorry, oh man, Priests four. are good. Four or five. I mean, that's that's like 400% like of what five usually Five, I believe. Was it five? No, four. Four because the priest will you've only won one one game with priest, right? Yeah, the priest was last yeah. second. Yeah. So four four games. So life coach, um now now that we know that you won the group, uh we know that you will be facing um the the second place of group C, which I believe was Tansivka. And uh I think it was Tansivka. And because he was talking like he didn't want to he didn't want to face you specifically, <laughs> right? No, because yeah. mm -hmm. he, he does he he does he doesn't really like playing against you because you win uh, win so often, I guess, against him. Oh oh do I? I, I don't I know. Don't know. <laughs> Uh, so, <laughs> what what uh, what what are your thoughts on this? Like, uh, what uh, what what are your thoughts going into the match with him? Yeah, I mean, despite the win rate, um, I guess um, I just dislike playing friends. So it's uh, I would have preferred not to play against him, really yeah. not. But um, yeah, cannot change that. And of course, I will prepare. I also know that Stan is. Uh, well, um, very deep thinking player, so I'm pretty sure that he will analyze all the matches we played today. Um, and yeah, so I don't even know, was, uh, did we see any games on stream? No, they were played off stream, but okay. we know the results already. They played before you. Okay, yeah. sure, sure. No, but because of the classes. Actually a small yeah. advantage because he will know some of your decks, right? Yeah. Okay, sure. But on the other hand, I can enjoy Bucharest while he has to scout on the <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah, for sure. That's a really for good sure. reason. <laughs> okay. Oh. 
we just got the information that for the top eight, the decks will be released. So oh, everyone oh, perfect. will have perfect info and it will be a fair deal for everyone. Yeah, fair environment. I definitely approve of this. Yeah, okay. so now you can't uh, enjoy Bucharest. You will be studying the deck list. Yeah, you have to study <laughs> all the deck list now. Right, oh, sorry. right, yeah. Uh, but but <laughs> if, if, if the deck lists are public, um, you should definitely take a look at, uh, at the rogue we built. Um, the rogue is very, very interesting, yeah, because we, we managed to build it in a way that it uh, changes uh, a lot of matchups basically completely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. But yeah. Okay, well, that's good to hear. I will not uh, take more of your time because we have to prepare for the new match, which will be the Gara um, versus Hoi, loser of your, um, of your group. Though th this will be the decider match for both of them, uh, the do or die for them. And uh, we'll go to a short break, so don't go anywhere, guys. This is PGL Tower Tales, <laughs> Tower Tales, sorry, 2016.